prepare your heart to worship the Lord this morning. You know, we come this morning to share with Him, and also we come this morning to listen to Him. So, let's ask Him to speak to us. Thank you. 
turn in the same hymnal to uh, number 455. I am thine, O Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
back to you. We praise you, glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Time for sharing of joys and concerns. Again, reminder to pray for um, Vicki Johnson, and hope I think she hopes to be back with us next Sunday as she recovers. Thank you to everyone. I just want to say, and I know Randy commented during announcement time, but I want to thank everybody for all their effort on Thursday. There's uh, lots of people working hard. Uh, we had around 40 or so kids that registered. Okay. And then we had lots of family members that were around. I don't know the total amount, but we probably had 60 or so you know, people around here for the kids' carnival uh, besides those that were here working. So glad to have an opportunity to have some influence with all them. And I want to encourage you to be praying for the families that were here, uh, that, you know, that God would bring them back uh, to come and worship with us. Uh, also this morning, Mary's not here. Let's remember Mary in prayer as well. And I know I did talk with, or I got a message from Karen Hook last night. Uh, the baby is, is doing well. There's progress going on, but it's going to be a while, I think, before the baby's able to come home. So let's be praying for them. She asked us to remember them in prayer. I'm asking for prayer, prayer of patience, guidance, and strength. I need all of the above. Uh, I am learning that holding on to things instead of giving them to God has given me a hard time. And it's giving my wife and grandson a hard time too. So I need to cut that out. Uh, need prayer for my wife, the healing of her leg. And uh, uh, I'm going to the doctor for my neck, and that it's, it's starting to flare up a little bit, but not bad. Uh, it swells on the back goes down to my shoulder. They said there's a, uh, what do you call it, a burr on my shoulder? A, yeah, a burr. Yeah, it could be the part of the problem. But uh, I praise God for the fun I'm having with my grandson and uh, family. I'm, I'm starting to realize a little bit that I, I do have the things I need quit working so hard and trying to uh, overprove myself. So with that, uh, here in. Church. I want to thank everybody for all the birthday wishes. You know, Hollywood or Brent, as everybody knows him, uh, for all his praise, me being around when he needed a friend, and I can say the same thing because he's been there when I was in bad straits. And I'm kind of like Dave, you know, worrying about getting this 
and that. Well, I gave all that to the Lord, and every Sunday when you get the paper, you got all these ads for this and that, and this is on sale, and here's a coupon for that. Well, they go back in the paper, and I give the paper to my next door neighbors and let them worry about it. Yeah, so I think I got all the stuff I need. Might need a couple more tools here and there, but other than that, I've got everything I need. And what I really needed, I got here, and that was, that was pretty well right with the Lord, but I know I'm not 100% right, because I'll never be that. And it's always something to strive for. And thanks again, everybody, for the birthday.
a member of the congregation and you become somebody that helps out in the congregation and somebody we look to you know to help and I just uh, it's really gratifying I know to me your friend Brett to us as a congregation that you're here and uh, have a happy birthday tomorrow all right um, I also want to take an opportunity here we've had a number of kids who have gone to camp this summer and we got Malika come up here for a second Chelsea Chelsea, come here for a second. Where's Andrew at? Is he back there? Hey, Andrew. Andrew, come here. See if we can get him up here. Come here. Kelsey, I'm going to ask you a quick question, okay? All right. Kelsey went to camp with Desi. Now, Desi didn't want to say a whole lot. We'll say maybe Kelsey will say more. But what did you do at camp? I did the slippery slide. Slippery slide? Did you go hiking? Yeah. Okay. Did you enjoy being with your mom? Yeah. All right. Did you um, sing some songs? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did you have a fire? Did they have a fire? Did you sit around a fire? No. No, no fire. I guess wrong on that. What was the theme again from Camp this summer? Reaching out. Okay. Branching out. Did you have fun at camp? Yes. Good. Andrew. Now, I heard all kinds of things about how, just hang on, Malika, I'm going to get to you. I heard all kinds of things about Andrew's thing at camp. I heard he had so much fun, he even forgot about his mom. Uh -huh. But what, what did you do at camp, Andrew, that you really liked to do and that you enjoyed? Swimming. You liked swimming a lot. Okay. Did you make some friends at camp? Yes. That's good. We're glad you had a good time. We're glad you had a good time. Kelsey, Kenny, you already told us about camp, but do you have anything else that you want to say about camp? You pretty much already said it. All right, you got a break. You already did your thing. Malika, what can you tell us about performing arts camp? And I'm particularly interested, performing arts camp, Stephen and Malika went, and they not only went to camp for the week, but then they performed at district conference. So can you tell us a little bit about how that went about? Well, what did you practice to perform? What did you end up performing? Um, we each had two skits that we had to memorize and perform, and there was five songs, I think, and we all did those. Okay. And there were, so what did you, so you all went to conference together, and what did, what, how did things go at conference? Good. You guys perform during a service or at what kind of event? At the service, like the first one on Friday. Okay. Did you guys have the whole service or part? Uh, part of it, and then there was a speaker after. Okay. All right. Cool. Anybody have questions for Malika about camp? Sounds like it was a good experience. Yeah. All right. All right. I know Chrissy came home telling us good things about so. Thank you to all of you for coming and sharing. One of the things, if you're not aware, you know, the church helps financially to send young people to camp. We believe that God uses that to make a difference in their life, and it's good to have them come home and share some of the positive things that have taken place. Um, let's bow our heads this morning, and we're going to have prayer as we prepare to go into God's Word. God, we want to thank you this morning for, you know, all the good things that are taking place. I think about this last week with the Kids Carnival. A lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of kids around here. Lord, and we continue to pray that you'll help us find ways to reach out to the young people who are part of our congregation and also to those who are part of this community, that they would find a way to, to get connected with this congregation. And Lord, we ask right now that as we look at your word, we pray again that you'll guide us, that you'll direct us, Give us ears to hear. I know there's always things that can distract us, other things that can come to mind, or things that are going on that we're concerned about, things that may happen later today, whatever. But God, I pray this morning, we would be able to set aside other things that may distract us, and that right now, that we would have an attentive ear and an attentive heart to your word, and that we'll allow it to continue to guide our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'm going to invite you this morning. I'm just going to look at one passage. I didn't ask Patty about conference. We're, we decided that Chrissy already gave the report, is, is what we decided. Patty said she didn't think she had anything further to add. So, um, Turn to Ma- Mark chapter 10. I'm going to invite you, if you want to you follow. It's going to be in Mark 10 this morning. And did I just die? It sounded like I just, I did just die. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm going to... No, it's... it's is it on? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. All right. Um, I want to encourage you to think about something. This week there's been a lot of effort put into ministry to children. <laughs> and when you have children around, sometimes chairs fall over, right? But there are a lot of people here Thursday working to bring children from the community in so that we could... Tell them something about God. Let them know that God cares about them and, and their family as well. I know many of you are here, and thanks to all who helped. I know before Thursday there was planning, preparation, different things that went on to make sure that that could become a reality. And, you know, it gave, got me to thinking a bit about, as a church and as individuals, how do we value young people? and children, and what emphasis do we put on their participation in our church, and uh, what God thinks about children, so I'm going to share a little bit about that this morning, you know, we just had some share about camp, and we value young people and kids enough that we help them financially to be able to go to camp, Um, you know, we just put a lot of effort into the kids' carnival, but let's listen to what is said in Mark chapter 10, and it's Verse 13, I'm going to begin, and Jesus is having an experience here, and let, let, let's hear what takes place. Mark 10, 13. People were bringing little children to him, this is to Jesus, in order that he might touch them. And you can kind of see an image of that on the screen. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to them, let the little children come to me, do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Let me read that again. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. That's a pretty significant statement, isn't it? And he took them up in his arms. And he laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Jesus cared about children. You know, in this story here, we have a story where uh, families were bringing their children to Jesus. Mark, you talked in Sunday school about a phrase, have a blessed day. Well, they were bringing their kids to Jesus that he could bless them, pray for them, you know, whatever, that, that, they would, that his favor would be on, on them. And the disciples thought that this was not important. You know, it didn't, it didn't seem significant to them. They thought that Jesus' time was being wasted. He had more important things to do. There were adults that needed him. There were more pressing issues, probably thinking there were people to be healed or there were other things that ought to take place. And so what did the disciples do? You know, it says that they, they uh, spoke sternly to them. You know, hey, you know, Jesus has got more important things. Leave him alone. The disciples kind of intervene, and they try to stop this flow of families bringing their children to Jesus. And then what is Jesus' response? Jesus saw this, and he was indignant. That's pretty significant. He was indignant. He, he, you know, he was upset. He said, no, 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 no. You know, the children are important. And it upset him that the disciples, you know, were trying to keep them away. And he says, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it's to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. You know what? We need children in our lives. Children help us to see, you know, what the kingdom of God is to be like. We've heard the phrase childlike faith. And the scripture uses that phrase. You know, the faith of a child. The innocence, you know, of a child. 
uh, the enthusiasm of a child. All those things are things, some of us that are older need to, need to have influence in our life. Now we often think about how, and we're going to talk a little bit this morning about how we can have an impact on children and young people. But also I want to remind you that they can have a good impact on us. Um, Kay is down there every week with children, and, and I'm just guessing, Kay, because I stop by from time to time and see what's going on, and this morning they had two massive towers built, or <laughs> Tower of Babel, I heard, but I'm guessing that I know you're having an impact on them, but I'm guessing that they have an impact on you as well. Would that be right? You know, there's something significant to be gained uh, by being around kids. Those of us that are grandparents, we have grandkids around because there's something to be benefited from us and there's something that we have to give. Um, you know, I remember being a youth pastor many, many years ago. And I remember 30 years ago, Ron and I would go home from youth group and we would have just spent, you know, a couple hours with 35 kids. And we would go home and we would just, there was like a heaviness in our heart because of seeing some of the challenges they were facing and wondering about what was to come and thinking about how our world was changing, families were changing, some of the difficulties or obstacles that they would face. And I know, um, you know, 30 years later, certainly one thing that we could all see is there's plenty of challenges for a young person to overcome. There's plenty of negative influences and difficulties, and they need you, and they need me, and they need the church to help them. And I want to encourage us to think a little bit this morning about how we can do that and what impact maybe we can make as well as what impact they may make on us. First off, one of the things I want to share, and I, I think, you know, we're always hoping and our goal is that the impact that we have whether it be children or adults, would be an eternal impact. That we're trying to help people come to a relationship with Jesus. That won't just, you know, playing games at the carnival was fun. And I had some kids that came back ten times, I think. I don't know. How many times did you have kids pinning the tail on the donkey, Larry? <laughs> Probably a lot of times, did you? <laughs> All right. They have something that's fun, they're going to get a prize. They come back over and over. But, you know, at the most, that lasted a couple hours. That has a short-term impact. They have some fun. We're really hoping, ultimately, to be able to have an eternal impact and help people see their need for Jesus and introduce them to Jesus. Um, one of the things that Ron and I do is when our grandkids are at our house, we, we have devotions in the morning, we have devotions at night, and, and one of the things, especially at night, we use is, is on the Internet. There's um, actually it's Crossroads Kids Club, and they have these videos that are God's story videos. And they're always telling parts of God's story. And we'll watch them together. And we'll talk about them. And the kids love them. And thinking of different ways that we can help lead them to Jesus and tell them about Jesus. And show them what it means to follow Jesus. You know, one of the things that we can do as a church, as we reach out to young people, is help them to make sense out of life. Understanding who made the world. What went wrong? in the world, and how God has designed a way to make things right or to bring us back into relationship with Him are really significant and important things that kids need to know so they can have a place and find their place in life. And we have the opportunity to do that or to share that. You know, we can help them find a path to follow. You know, do you remember? I mean, I don't remember how day, but can you guys remember back when you were 13? 15, 17, and you wondered what was going to happen in your life? Did, did that, was that only me or was that everybody? Did you guys wonder that too? What am I going to do? Will I get married? What job will I do? Anybody else have them thoughts? A few. Okay. Some of you are just marching through and whatever happened, happened, I guess. I spent a lot of time, you know, pondering all those things and wondering. And each of us, you know, find a path in life. And, you know, we believe that God has designed a path for each of us. It has purposes for each of us. And we can help younger people to find the path that God has 
you know, for them. I think about, I know Larry and Jenny have been talking to the youth some about education. And one of the, one of the things that they're involved in at this point is learning and growing. And that's part of finding your path is determining how can I learn the things that I need to learn? Where do I need to go to be educated so that I can accomplish what God has called for me to do? You know, our caring and influence in the lives of young people and children can help them from falling into some of the pitfalls that life has to offer. You know, if I started asking and walked up and down the row and said, what pitfalls did you find on your path through life? We would be here all day. And we'd hear some pretty interesting stories. I've heard a lot of them already. No matter what life you've lived, and, and Randy likes to think so that, you know, there, there are people who have easy lives. To be able to, everybody falls into pitfalls. They're just not all the same. But there are difficulties or challenges, and there are, you know, mistakes certainly that we can make, sin that we can fall into, and we want to help and encourage young people to stay out of those things and to be safe from those things. Um, you know, one of the things that I found as a young person, my connection with the church was really significant in my life. My dad was a pastor, so I was there every time the door was open. And I'm sure I was there by the time I was a week old. Um, I met a friend at church when I was seven years old. His name is Steve Gilbertson. Anne met him because he went with us to Honduras. And Steve and I have been friends now for 50 years. He's a pastor in Cave Creek, Arizona. I've told you different times about my going out there. And the cool thing, he's going to be out here, not this Thursday, but a week from Thursday. He and his wife are going to be at Bible study here. So I hope that... Many of you will be here and have a chance to meet him. He pastors a church, had a unique church that actually meets at the Buffalo Creek Saloon, uh, Buffalo Chip Saloon, and they have they have a, a interesting service outdoors there every week. And I'll probably let him share a little bit about that when when he's here. But I know for me, friendships that I've made in church have been the most significant friendships of my life. Um, my hope is that. The relationships that we have with one another are relationships that have an important impact on our life. And for us to provide a place where kids can come, interact with one another, and build friendships is a meaningful and important thing in their life. You know, I just kind of bear my heart to you a little bit. One of the things that concerned me when I got here was ministry to young people. And you know, Joe had, well, Darlin was teaching, I think, the high school class when I first came. And then Joe had taken that over. There wasn't a regular youth group meeting. You know, I think it was an answer to prayer. Courtney kind of, some unique things happened where Courtney decided to take an interest in that and led a youth group for a while. And I know recently, then, then she's kind of moved on to another stage of her life, being a mother. And more recently, Christy has shown some interest in that, where kind of taking baby steps on trying to get that going again, and I think the hope is that this fall uh, they'll get to meeting regularly, hopefully. And uh, I want to encourage young people to be a part of that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think we need is to provide opportunities for young people to get together and have a place where they can be supported and they can have uh, people that care about them and they can pray together and think together. Um, you know, as we think about benefiting families, I know Chrissy and I said, well, let, let's talk to parents about a youth group, and let, let's talk to the kids about youth group, and let's see what, you know, what we could do that would be beneficial. And my prayer is that that will take root. It hasn't yet, really, but praying that that will take root and that that will grow and a church will be able to be a benefit in that way, making a difference in the lives of young people. Um, one of the things, we had the kids' carnival Thursday night. Not only were there kids here, there were probably as many parents or grandparents as there were kids around here. And as we reach out to kids, one of the opportunities we have is to get connected with families. Some of you sitting here this morning, I know, came because your kids first came to this church. And I've heard those stories. Somehow the church had something going on for kids, your kids started coming, and the next thing you know, you decided to come along. Um, I, I think... Melton's, I've heard that about you guys. Desi, I remember meeting James 
first in a Sunday school class, and then and then you came along. I mean, in many instances, that's kind of the reality. That as we reach out to kids and make a difference in the life of kids, it's a way to help families get connected. Um, as we think about our impact or what positive impact we can have in kids, think for a minute too about what positive impact young people have in our church. We had a few of them come up and share this morning. Um, we have been tasked, according to scripture, with passing on our faith, teaching and training. We're, we're called by Jesus in the Great Commission to go and make disciples, all right? You know, we're, we're uh, invited to help train those who will be future leaders in the church. Without young people, we don't have that. So, you know, we're, we're blessed to have children and young people here that we can impact and make a difference and pass on our faith and invite them to take part in what's going on in the church. Uh, I've appreciated Chrissy's not here this morning, but I know when she's been worship leader, she often tries to find one of the young people to take the mic around and carry it around. I know that's a simple thing to do, but those kind of things where we can find ways to continue to teach and train kids to be a part of the congregation and to participate, I think is a great thing. Um, having children here makes a difference. It doesn't matter if it's here or at a family or whatever. The scripture says, uh, in terms of a man having, having children, he says that, that children are a blessing from the Lord. Happy is the man who has his quiver full or has enough you know, like children like an arrow, you know, and when your quiver's full, that, that there's a joy and a happiness that comes from children that we all need and that we benefit from some of their enthusiasm. Um, you know, having children present reminds the congregation that all people are made in God's image, that we are different. Some of us are older and some of us are younger, and yet God's image is represented in all of us. The innocence, the creativity, the happiness, that kids have is something that, that we need. Um, having children present in a congregation gives adults real-life examples of childlike faith. Um, my granddaughter, last Sunday, she got baptized. You guys know Madeline. She's been here lots of times. Um, I was here, and I wasn't able to be there, and it kind of came up quickly, and whatever. But we went over that afternoon and celebrated with her the fact that she got baptized last Sunday. Now, Madeline's nine years old, and she's very sincere about her faith in Jesus. And, uh, you know, her childlike faith is such a blessing, and Ethan's too. But to see kids who, who hear God's word and respond to God's word and have a heart to do what's right. I know, you know, I, Madeline, Ann, you kind of have a... Ann has been a good friend to Madeline. Madeline kind of... I don't, how do I say? The first thing you did, you gave her hula hoops. <laughs> and she likes the hula hoop. And so she always hula hoop when she's here. And, and I always have said, Ann and Madeline are the two most generous people I've ever met. Um, and it just... In different ways, we have an impact. Sometimes we realize it, sometimes we don't realize it. But I'm thankful for young children that God's put in my life that inspire me. I, I debated about whether to tell this story, but I'm, go I'm going to tell it. Um, you guys, we had our grandson with us. He's only been here once. His name is Malachi. Little blonde-haired boy. A couple months ago, he was here. Anybody remember Malachi? All right, all right. Some of you, some of you met him. There's a long story there that I'm not going to go into the whole thing right now. But Malachi heard about a police officer that passed away just south of Indianapolis. And he has a lemonade stand. And this past week, he decided to donate all the money raised by his lemonade stand to this family, the family of this police officer. Last I heard, it's now over $1,300 that he's raised. The police in Kokomo heard about it, and they all came out to his lemonade stand. The police south of Indianapolis, about over an hour away, they made a caravan, and about 20 police cars came to his lemonade stand. It's been on the news all over down there. 
And Malachi's been all over the TV news and on the front page of the Kokomo paper because he had a heart to care about this family. I'm not just trying to brag about my grandson, but I'm saying, you know, kids make a difference. Actually, yesterday, he was invited to go with the police officers to this man's funeral and stood with the police officers as the casket came by. He met the governor yesterday down in Indianapolis, and it all came from him caring enough to decide just the simple thing that he was going to give the money from his lemonade stand to this family. And it snowballed, and that's kind of where it ended up. I know it even was on NBC's national news website. They had a, they had a thing about it. Children can make a difference. We were reading in Timothy this morning about, I think, Brent, you read the scripture, about don't, don't overlook young people. Um, they can inspire us. You know, Timothy was a young minister, and Paul was saying to him, yes, you're young, but you can make a difference. And, and we need the, the difference that children and young people can make. I know we've had, I know, you know Corey, James, different ones who's helped in our service. You know, every Sunday, helping with projection and different things like that. Um, you know, one of the other benefits that we have is, as older folks, children in the church give us the opportunity to kind of be a spiritual grandparent and to have an impact. Um, you know, Andrew, he's always he hangs around here a lot. And on Bible study, a lot of times he'll come and sit on my lap. And, you know... It's important, you know, that, that we don't have a big church and we don't have a bunch of mega children's ministries going on and youth ministries going on, but it's important, and I guess this Sunday, I'm just raising up, we need to value the children and the youth that we have and show them that we care. Um, you know, there's lots of churches that have big programs and some of them have gone over to them and gone to some of that. You know, I think one of the most important things that they need is a relationship. And that may come from, well, Betty, I'll take an example. We had your birthday party a few weeks ago, and Alex Ducart came up from Columbus to be here because he sees Betty as a, as a person that is an older person that he has a close relationship with and that he, he wanted to be here with you. I know you told me about him calling you and inviting you out to lunch at one point because you showed interest in his life, you cared about him, and that made a difference, you know, in his life. You know, for each of us, you know, with our children, our grandchildren, or even just within our congregation and our neighborhood, the ways that we show concern for young people, they end up blessing us, but they're a real blessing to them. So never underestimate the difference it may make when on Sunday morning, you know, Andrew's running around over here and you grab a hold of him and say, Andrew, how was your week? You know, or, or Kelsey, how was your week this week? And and let them know, you know, that you care about what's going on. It does make a difference. And that's something that we have a value that we can offer. You know, I want to thank those who regularly do children's ministry here in our church. I'm Kay. I don't know how many years she's taught Sunday school, but a number of years since I've been here. And, uh, and I stop by there from time to time pretty regularly, and Kay does a great job. And we appreciate her. I know kids love her, my grandkids. They're getting a little older now, but they, they love her and they like going to her class. And Kay, you've been a blessing to a lot of kids, you know, in there. I know Darlin, you taught, you know, the youth for quite some time. I know this last year, Ann has taught, you know, the, the youth class, and Chrissy has taught the youth class a little bit. Chrissy is aspiring to get the youth group back going. We appreciate all of them. Larry and Jenny. You know, the way you've extended yourself and helping with some thoughts about education has been a blessing. And all those of you who are parents here and invest yourself in the lives of children, you are making a difference. And it is important work. And I want to encourage you. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Don't keep them away, because of such is the kingdom of God. God loved children. Let's, as a congregation, reach out and love children as well. And I'm going to invite us to do something. We're going to close this message time this morning by having all the young people and children come up here. And I think we got a few of them back there, and I warned them. 
Hey, Andrew and Kelsey and Alex, come on up here. Come on up, Kenny. Did we did we lose Malika or is she around somewhere? Come on up here. Let's see how many we can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kay, tell them to come on in. I don't know if we got, we don't have anybody up there right now. All right. Let's all stand, and we're going to sing together as we close this morning. We're turning to 384. It's the doxology, and we're going to close with that this morning, 384. 384. 